Uh, my name is Michael Kitsis. I'm the uh, Partner and Director of Research with Pinnacle Advisory Group, a private wealth management firm in the U.S. As we would view it, modern portfolio theory is not broken at all. The problem for better and for worse is that we weren't quite using it the way that it was intended to be used. When we look back to even what Markowitz originally wrote 60 years ago when he developed the theoretical framework, what he said was, I'm developing a model for you that takes inputs expected returns, volatility and risk, the relationship between assets, and we'll tell you how to mix those together to construct a portfolio. But I leave it up to you, the user, to figure out what those proper inputs should be. As an industry, we, I think unfortunately, we, we got a little bit lazy. We kind of took the easy way out and said, well, I've, I've got a brilliant, simple idea. Let's just take a long-term historical average of these numbers. That should be a reasonable estimate, especially if markets are efficient. That means the market should know that this is a reasonable estimate, and we can go forth and construct portfolios. And the problem that I, we found more recently and that I think really was brought home in GFC is the fact that these long-term historical averages are actually not very good estimates of returns and risk in any particular environment. It varies much more in practice in the real world. And as soon as we introduce the possibility that these inputs could be more dynamic, it means in turn that we can still use modern portfolio theory, but that our asset allocation would have to be dynamic in response. The problem with using long-term averages and the reason that they're faulty is, is sort of at the most basic level, what happens over the long-term average is simply not particularly representative of any particular environment. You know, it's sort of like saying, if the long-term average on term deposits is 5%, I should always assume the return is 5%, even if the bank is only paying three. It just makes, why would you assume five when the bank is paying three? Or if the bank was paying seven, it's equally ridiculous to, to choose five. Yet that's essentially what we've done. Now with stock shares in particular, they're a little bit more volatile. The uh, way that you value their yields and returns is a little bit fuzzier. So it hasn't quite been such a stark contrast as to say, I'm assuming the return is five, even though the current yield is three. But that's effectively what we've done. So as we would view it, modern portfolio theory is still built on the framework that we need expected returns, expected volatility, and expected correlation. So we're ultimately still going to come back to those as, as very fundamental inputs. The issue is really trying to determine how do we best estimate what a reasonable expected return, volatility, or correlation is for our current environment. And from that perspective, we're starting to see a lot of different ways that advisors are adapting and trying to evaluate those inputs better. In terms of expected returns, we see approaches like a more valuation-informed approach. So looking at uh, earnings and PE ratios, or particularly things like cyclically adjusted earnings ratio, uh, uh, price earnings ratios, which give a little bit more of a stable, consistent estimate to what expected returns might look like going forward. That is uh, very closely analogous to looking at the, uh, the yield on a bond. So the issue of will, will more accurate uh, modern portfolio theory inputs protect us from sort of these uh, shocking risk environments and effects that happen? The, the answer is sort of yes and no. Um, certainly at some level, there is so, always some risk of a purely exogenous, truly unexpected event that simply occurs out of nowhere and that we then have to deal with and, and may throw uh, uh, some surprises into our portfolios. At the same time, many of the things that we have previously called surprises and shocks, we would have found were not really surprises and shocks if we had looked at uh, portfolio construction from this framework. For instance, when we look historically with the data that we have available at correlations, and instead of taking a broad multi-decade or hundred year average, look more specifically at situations like what is the correlation of risk assets in situations where economies deleverage, the answer is they all go the same direction. The correlations approach one very rapidly. They do that every time a financial system has a financial crisis. So from that perspective, it might, if we were looking in that manner, it might not have been such a surprise that the diversification didn't quite hold up the way that we'd expected. If we look in detail, we even see at the most basic level, many investments have different correlations in bull markets than in bear markets. The fundamental takeaway and the real key message is the very basic principle that the inputs to portfolio construction are not stable. They shift and change over time as markets shift and change and risks and opportunities uh, adjust. And because those inputs to portfolio construction are dynamic, so too must the asset allocation that you adopt for your clients. It's not enough to simply 
uh, focus on selecting individual managers that may bring value to the table while holding a static asset allocation. Because the reality is if you continue to hold that one consistent asset allocation in all environments, while in the real world risk is moving up and down, that means in practice you're, the risk that your clients are taking is actually volatilely moving up and down. And of course that presents all sorts of problems from clients who will find the risk of their portfolio violates their tolerance and begin to react in a panic mode or simply may lead them to a point where they have untenable losses. So we have to adopt a more dynamic view and understanding that what's going on in markets is always changing and the natural outcome for that, the, the modern portfolio theory driven outcome of that is that asset allocation itself has to become more dynamic.